If you're building a computer vision application, rather than training the weights from scratch, from random initialization, you often make much faster progress if you download weights that someone else has already trained on the network architecture and use that as pre-training and transfer that to a new task that you might be interested in. The computer vision research community has been pretty good at posting lots of data sets on the internet. So if you hear of things like ImageNet or MS Coco or Pascal types of data sets, these are the names of different data sets that people have posted online and that a lot of computer vision researchers have trained their algorithms on. Sometimes this training takes several weeks and might take many, many GPUs. And the fact that someone else has done this and gone through the painful hyperparameter search process means that you can often download open source weights that took someone else many weeks or months to figure out and use that as a very good initialization for your own neural network um, and use transfer learning to sort of transfer knowledge from some of these very large public data sets to your own problem. Let's take a deeper look at how to do this. Let's start with an example. Let's say you're building a cat detector to recognize your own pet cat. So uh, according to the internet, um, Tigger is a common cat name and uh, Misty is another common cat name. And let's say your cats are called Tigger and Misty and uh, there's also, you know, neither. So you have a classification problem with three classes. Um, is this picture Tigger, or is it Misty, or is it neither? And we'll ignore the case of both of your cats appearing in a picture. Now, you probably don't have a lot of pictures of Tigger or Misty, so your training set will be small. So what can you do? I recommend you go online and download some open source implementation of a neural network and download not just the code, but also the weights. And there are a lot of uh, networks, and there are a lot of networks you can download that have been trained on, for example, the ImageNet dataset, which has a thousand different classes. So the network might have a softmax unit that outputs one of a thousand possible classes. What you can do is then get rid of the softmax layer and create your own softmax unit that outputs Tigger or Misty or Neither. And in terms of the network, I'd encourage you to think of all of these layers as frozen. So you freeze the parameters in all of these layers of the network, and you would then just train the parameters associated with your softmax layer which is a softmax layer with three possible outputs, you know, Tigger, Misty, or Neither. And by using someone else's pre-trained weights, you might be able to get pretty good performance on this, even with a small data set. Fortunately, a lot of deep learning frameworks support this mode of operation. And in fact, uh, depending on the framework, it might have things like trainable parameter, equals zero, you might set that for some of these earlier layers in order to just say, you know, don't train those weights. Um, or sometimes you have a parameter like freeze equals one. Uh, and these are different ways and different deep learning programming frameworks that let you specify whether or not to train the weights associated with a particular layer. And so in this case, you would train only the softmax layers weights, but freeze all of the earlier layers weights. One other neat trick that may help for some implementations is that because all of these early layers are frozen, uh, there is some fixed function that doesn't change because you're not changing it, you're not training it, that takes this input image x and maps it to some set of activations in that layer. So one other trick that could speed up training is if you just pre-compute that layer, um, the features, the really activations from that layer and just save them to disk. And what you're doing is you're using this fixed function in this first part of the neural network to take as input any, Im any image x and compute some feature vector for it. And then you're training a shallow softmax model from this uh, feature vector to make a prediction. And so one step that could help your computation is you just 
pre-compute that layer's activation for all the examples in your training set and save them to disk, and then just train a softmax classifier on top of that. Right. So the advantage of the save to disk or the pre-compute method, the save to disk method, is that you don't need to recompute those activations uh, every time you take an epoch or take a pass through your training set. So this is what you do if you have a pretty small training set for your task. What if you have a larger training set? So one rule of thumb is if you have a larger label data set, so maybe you just have a ton of pictures of Tigger, Misty, um, as well as, I guess, pictures of neither of them, one thing you could do is then freeze fewer layers. So maybe you freeze just these layers and then train these later layers. Although if the output layer has different classes, then you need to you know, have your own output unit anyway. Uh, Tigger, Misty, or Neither. And um, there are a couple ways to do this. You could take the last few layers, um, and there are a couple ways to do this. You could take the last few layers' weights and just use that as initialization and do gradient descent from there. Or you could also blow away these last few layers and just you know use um, your own new hidden units and then your own final softmax output. So um, either of these methods could be worth trying. But maybe one pattern is uh, if you have more data, the number of layers you freeze uh, could be smaller, and then the number of layers you train on top could be greater. And the idea is that if you have a bigger data set, then maybe you have enough data not just to train a single softmax unit, but to train some you know modest sized neural network that comprises the last few layers of this uh, final network they end up using. And then finally, if you have a lot of data, one thing you might do is take this uh, open source network and weights and use the whole thing just as initialization and train the whole network. Although again, if uh, this was a thousand node softmax and you have just three outputs, you need your own softmax output to output the labels you care about. Um, but the more label data you have for your task, so the more pictures you have of Tigger, Misty, and Neither, the more layers you could train. And in the extreme case, you could um, use the ways you download just as initialization, so they would replace random initialization, and then you could do gradient descent uh, training, updating all the weights and all the layers of the network. So that's transfer learning for the training of confidence. In practice, because the open data sets on the internet are so big, and the weights you can download that someone else has spent weeks training, has learned from so much data, you find that for a lot of computer vision applications, you just do much better if you download someone else's open source weights and use that as initialization for your problem. So in all the different disciplines, in all the different applications of uh, deep learning, I think that computer vision is one where transfer learning is something that you should almost always do unless you actually have a very, very large, unless you have an exceptionally large data set to train everything else from scratch yourself. But transfer learning is just very worth seriously considering unless you have an exceptionally large data set and a very large computational budget to train everything from scratch by yourself.